Okay, so today I'm replacing the lift pump in a 2014 Ram Eco Diesel. Uh, I've already verified that this truck has zero fuel pressure in between the lift pump in the tank and the injection pump on the engine. Uh, I do have a separate video showing how to check that fuel pressure with a gauge, uh, but it should be right around roughly 60 PSI. And uh, in this case, there's zero PSI. Um, I've also verified, and this is very important, I've also verified that it has power and ground at the fuel pump, uh, but it's not doing anything with it. So without a doubt, I have a bad lift pump. Uh, first thing I start out with is removing the drive shaft. Now, you might be able to get away with not doing this, but it doesn't take much effort and uh, it does give you quite a bit more room. So there are a total of four 15 millimeter head bolts that hold the, uh, the drive shaft to the pinion flange. Um, afterwards, it's gonna be a little stuck to the pinion flange. So take your pry bar underneath here or very carefully with a hammer, you can uh, knock that loose. What you don't wanna do is distort this part right here where the U-joint uh, cap goes into because you can easily damage that with a hammer. So don't be that guy and do that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna remove that drive shaft and we'll go from there. Okay, now with the drive shaft removed, you can easily see the uh, fuel tank there. It's got these two straps that hold it in place. Um, I also want to comment too, it just, the drive shaft just slides right out of, uh, in this case, being a four wheel drive model, slides right out of the transfer case. Um, I've never had any fluid really drip out of the transfer case, but it would be smart to have a, a drain pan ready to catch any uh, fluid that comes out of it. If you do have any fluid that comes out of it, it won't be much. Uh, yeah, so there's the def tank too, just for reference. All right, let me go ahead and start removing this uh, fuel tank. I'm going to start disconnecting everything on top of it. And then I'll put my uh, transmission jack underneath it to support it and then lower it down. Okay, so here I am on the driver's side of the truck. And I'm going to start by removing uh, the fuel filler hose, which is, there's a hose clamp right there for the fuel filler hose. And this is for the vent hose, and we're going to disconnect that hose clamp too. Okay, so I've got the uh, fuel filler hose and the vent hose disconnected from the filler neck. Um, there's also a quick connect hose right here with this nylon uh, hose that goes right into that one. Um, if you come across these fittings, you know, like I have in modern cars, it's really nice. They make an inexpensive set of pliers like this that are really great because there's a, a quick release you have to grab on either side of that fitting. Kind of, you got to do one of these numbers right here. So just, you know, maybe before I get into, into the job, get one of these pliers right here because it really makes life a lot easier. Okay, also I want to point out, for the sake of uh, testing to make sure if you have power and ground at the fuel pump, uh, here I am, you know, there's the rear differential, uh, there's a the fuel filter housing, and above the tank, there's an electrical connector here. Now I've already got it undone, and like on any Chrysler connector, you have to uh, slide this red, uh, this red plastic piece to the side, and then you can squ squeeze right here and pull it off the fuel pump. But for checking power and ground, it is, uh, it should be pretty obvious, but it's the heavy gauge wires on the connector. So in this case, it's a blue blue wire with an orange stripe and the thick black wire is the ground. So if you were to take your test light and stick it in between uh, pins number one and four there, and when you turn the key on, you should you should see your test light light up and uh, it'll stay lit up for maybe 20 to 30 seconds as the computer primes the uh, fuel system. And then after, I'm guessing, about 30 seconds or so, it shuts off. So your, your uh, test light should shut off. But absolutely, before you're you know guessing that a fuel pump is bad, uh, make sure you're getting power and ground back there first. Okay, so as far as what fuel lines to disconnect, uh, starting back here at the fuel filter housing, above the rear differential. Uh, you're gonna see 
So these two lines up here, uh, you're only worried about this one right here with the red uh, connector or the red clip. Um, this is going from the fuel pump, pumps fuel up to the fuel filter housing through this hose right here. And then it leaves the fuel filter housing through this hose right here with the blue clip. And that goes by the uh, fuel tank and then directly to the frame. So you actually do not need to disconnect this one, but just disconnect this one. And uh, like on any of these clips, just be careful. They are, they can be delicate. So you definitely don't want to break a clip and make your life any more of a headache than what it needs to be. So I've already got it. The connectors just shove straight up and I was able to do that with my thumb carefully. And then it pulls right off that housing right there. Now the lines, they go. So they clip into that plastic clip right there. So make sure you, uh, before you drop the fuel tank to undo it from that clip. And then otherwise, obviously I have that electrical connector undone. And then there's one more fuel line you should disconnect at the uh, front. So this is the front of the fuel tank. There's the def tank. And if I can get the focus. Uh, this connector right here. So this is actually the return line returning fuel back from the engine back to the fuel tank. Um, God, if I can get it to focus. Well, that's kind of a better shot. Um, this clip right here is pretty delicate. So be very careful with that clip. Um, I have had it break before, you know, on me before. And I was able to go to an auto parts store and find a replacement clip. Um, you can, if you're in a bind, you can use a zip tie, but just be mindful when you do that. Um, there's low pressure in this return line going back to the fuel tank, but it obviously still needs to be a leak-proof connection, so be very careful with that. But again, the clips are delicate, so do your best to uh, not damage them. Okay, so I've got that fuel line disconnected in front of the fuel tank. Uh, you'll definitely lose some... Uh, diesel uh, fuel from there, that connection. So made a little bit of a mess here. So be sure to have a, a drain pan for that connection. Okay, so with my hose connections undone and the electrical connector for the fuel pump, I can uh, start removing the fuel tank straps. I have the uh, fuel tank supported here by the transmission jack. Uh, obviously, if you're like most guys doing this on the ground, you'd be using a uh, Ideally, maybe uh, two, two jacks, uh, blocks of wood, whatever you got to su support the fuel tank. Um, I've also actually, on the ground, strong-armed the fuel tank out of the truck. Uh, but I knew that fuel tank was pretty much empty, so that was a little more feasible. But uh, just be mindful of the fact that the fuel sloshing back and forth in this long tank can make it almost unpredictable to handle. So while you might be able to physically bear the weight of the fuel tank coming out, the fuel sloshing back and forth can, uh, you know, cause a big problem for you. So be mindful of that. So be very careful when you lower the fuel tank. Uh, so now I can undo the two nuts I've already undone here. Uh, it's a 15 or a 16 millimeter hex on it. And then the one back there, I still have to undo. And then, uh, yeah, I'll show you the uh, top of the fuel tank. Okay, now with the uh, fuel tank lowered from the frame, it makes it a lot easier to see uh, the connections and what purpose they serve. So uh, the fuel fitting we disconnect at the front of the fuel tank, that's it right there. That is the fuel return line and that from the engine that dumps fuel back into the tank. Uh, so here we are looking at the top of the fuel pump. Uh, here's the lock ring for the fuel tank or the fuel pump. Uh, it's a pressure line that pumps fluid or pumps diesel fuel. Where'd it go? Right there up to the uh, fuel filter housing. Uh, this is the uh, fuel filler hose that goes to your the steel filler neck on the box of the truck. Um, I undid it right there at the uh, filler neck, but depending on your situation, you might uh, feel you might want to disconnect it right here at the fuel tank that might make it easier when you lower the um, fuel tank because this hose is um, gonna be rubbing on the frame. So in my case, I just, you know, pulled it, you know, over the frame. 
Um, I think it's pretty much it. And then also here is the uh, that quick connect uh, vent line that goes out to the uh, um, fuel filler neck. That's pretty much it. Um, so the, uh, the fuel pump itself, this one's just covered in dirt and debris. You don't want that stuff dropping into the fuel tank. So take a, hopefully you should have a blow gun on hand uh, or whatever you got and just blow all this uh, dust and debris, dirt, rocks and stuff away so you can remove that uh, fuel pump. To remove the uh, fuel pump, so you have the steel lock ring in place, um, there are some specialty tools that you can buy in line to uh, grab it and with a half inch ratchet, uh, twist it. Or um, you can also take a hammer and a screwdriver or a hammer and a punch. You know, and alt you know, alternatively, every 120 degrees, uh, you know, you, you're trying to twist it in a counterclockwise direction. So you can knock the ring, uh, knock it here, knock it there, knock it there and go back and forth to uh, remove that lock ring. Um, great idea to use uh, some kind of lubricant, WD-40 or whatever you have uh, right there. Okay, and that's the uh, fuel pump removed and on the ground. Uh, when you pull it out, there's gonna be quite, amount, quite a large amount of uh, diesel uh, fuel inside of here. So you're going to want to uh, tilt, tilt it and try to pour as much of that uh, diesel fuel back in the tank. Uh, but yeah, pretty much it. Very simple setup. Here's the actual fuel pump motor itself. Here is the uh, sending unit for your fuel gauge. And so on. So now I have to go to the parts store and pick up my uh, fuel pump and install the new one. Okay, here's the uh, new fuel pump placed in the tank. Uh, note that it comes with a new uh, O-ring seal. This is a Delphi brand fuel pump. I've used a few of these with good luck. Um, certainly much cheaper than the original Mopar ones. And then uh, note too that on the tank there, it's written locator. Uh, this plastic tab right here is located towards the rear of the tank, towards the rear axle. So make sure that gets placed uh, right there. So let me do that. Uh, put the snap ring on and uh, put that in place. Okay, so I've got the new fuel pump installed. Um, again, on the lock ring, I would encourage you to find a correct tool. They make universal lock ring uh, fuel tank removal tools and installation tools that hook up to a you know, half inch ratchet. Um, you can, to get by, you can use a, uh, a hammer and a punch or a screwdriver if you're very careful and uh, you do it strategically, you know, you do it um, alternate from one side to the other, you know, every 120 degrees or whatever you got to do. Um, so just be careful when you do that. Um, again, so this fitting right here is the return line coming back from the engine. So fuel gets dumped into the fuel tank through here. Uh, this is the pressure line, the output line of the fuel pump in the tank, and that pumps uh, diesel fuel to the fuel filter housing. Okay, so here we are. I just turned on the key and the fuel pump is priming and that's exactly where it should be on a brand new pump or a properly functioning pump is right around 60 psi. I would say, you know, 58 to 62 psi would be ideal. Uh, so that's great. Before I had zero uh, psi. Um, as far as uh, connecting it to the fuel lines here up at the engine, um, I have a separate video on this, but basically I use a, a Dorman double bead kit. I don't know the part number offhand, but that double bead line right there, I've cut it down right there at the tip of my finger that clicks into this fuel line. Um, have it running to the fuel gauge here. The brass T and everything is part of a, uh, a generic uh, fuel pressure testing kit. And you can see I have it clamped to uh, the stock line there. So um, again, I have a separate video giving some details on that. But yeah, let me get this thing fired up and see how she runs.